Good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. What do you say both you and me push our problems aside right now. I want to show you a clutch of snakes that just hatched out to start the day and then I want to talk about something a little bit heavier and a little bit weird so just hang in there with me. This was actually a spider that was bred to a calico pin yellow belly and we got some pretty cool little babies in here. This is actually a calico yellow belly right here and then there's just a whole hodgepodge of pinstripes and normals and stuff like that but I tell you what I love the way the calico mixes with the spider they call them calendars actually and look at those white and pink sides on this one and this one is absolutely incredible too I mean these two babies right here are whoo doggy I tell you what those things are absolute rippers and we have so many amazing babies that are hatching this year but the truth is guys not every baby snake hatches you know sometimes there's kinked in the egg sometimes there's umbilical twists sometimes things just don't happen and even with us cutting the eggs it does increase the odds of producing good snakes but when an animal is kinked it sometimes just doesn't survive what do we do when that happens we try to recycle them the best we can instead of just like you know throwing them away or something like that we want to see can something else eat them and I had a couple babies early this morning that were actually stillborn in the egg and I think I'm gonna go ahead and try to feed them to something that is a little bit unusual what do you say we give it a shot we try to recycle as much as we can you guys have seen us feed off slug eggs and stuff like that so sometimes frogs believe it or not will eat snakes and in the wild so I'm gonna go ahead and try to feed a couple of our frogs these stillborns just so that we don't put them to waste here we go come on snoop frog you interested you interested buddy oh he's got it I'm not sure if he's gonna take it or not oh yeah he looks like he's gonna take it that's gonna be a pretty big meal for him but he seems to be loving it right now what a trip I think this is the first time I've ever fed a little ball python to a frog like this. This is crazy. I have no idea what's gonna happen here, but uh, wow. Again, I like the fact that we just don't throw something like this away that another animal can get nutrients from it. And again, that very diet is really good for frogs like this. They're gonna eat lizards and other frogs and snakes and bugs and everything in the wild. So this is actually a really good very diet for this guy. So that's pretty epic. Well, that went surprisingly well, but the Notorious, our frog, the Notorious, she is always hungry. So I have a feeling she'll put quick work to this other stillborn baby as well. Let's see what she does. Here you go, girl. Oh, oh, there she goes. She took it right away. Absolutely took it right away. Again, this will be a good meal. And and like I mentioned, guys, it's it stinks. I hate the fact that they were stillborn. But what was I going to do? Was I going to just throw them away because they're really good for nothing else? A couple weeks ago, we fed them to a cobra. Now we get to feed them to frogs. I mean, we're trying to make the best of a bad situation, all in all. Just a little update on the rainbow obsession that I have going on. Of course, this is the teen negative albinos. You gotta remember that just a week ago, I had kind of forgot that these even existed, right? I knew that they were out there, but I didn't even know anyone was working with them. Now we have the teen negatives, and of course, my obsession went past the teen negatives. And of course, I had to get the teen positives as well, the tyrosinase positive animals that have that kind of grayish, purplish look to them, which is really cool. Again, uh, I'm still obsessed with them, and I started kind of working with normal Colombian rainbows years ago and then the first mutation that I ever worked with was actually leucistic and this is actually my original leucistic male the first one that I ever had he's actually fathered a bunch of leucistic babies and we have a whole bunch of heads that we've raised up as well that comes from his line that I'm super excited about so in the next couple years we should be producing a lot more white ones we should be producing a lot more T negatives and T positives and now I'm gonna be on that obsessive lookout for what's next in rainbow boas what else can I get into I remember there used to be patternless ones years ago. Don't know if they're still around. And I even heard about some aneurysmic or axanthic. Don't know if they're around. So I'm going to be on the lookout for them for sure. But rainbow boas are definitely cool. And I just wanted to give you the little update.
You guys know we have the little baby chameleons in here right now. Well, we obviously just have them on the floor over here, but I'm thinking we need to make a little stand for them so that way we can have them here on display when we're open up at the rep care and people can actually see them and stuff like that. Don't think it's right to just have them on the ground. So I'm gonna go down and uh, see if I can bang out a really cool little custom stand that will kind of fit the decor of the Reptarium. Uh, so what do you say we go do that? the base all built. This is basically the stand where the actual screen cage is going to sit on and then now I'm just going to wrap it in Universal Rocks. But I really just have to wrap the three sides because the back side will actually be against the wall or you know people won't see it. So just have to cut that, uh, secure that and it should be good to go. Just like that, we have a little makeshift stand. It's not perfect by any stretch, but it's better than just putting it up on a table or something like that. Kind of fits the decor a little bit. So uh, hopefully these babies will do well for us. 23 babies in there. We've definitely seen them eating and stuff like that, but baby Jacksons can be a little tricky. So I'm a little nervous about it, but uh, but hey, we're gonna keep an eye on them, do the best we possibly can do. And now it looks pretty cool over here. Down in the dungeon, which can only mean one thing. Egg time. And today, we have another note from uh, Quinn here. It says, eggs before opening. Think what are eggs? Vessels of life to come, maybe, or audio transmission devices placed by alien overlords to listen into our spaghetti recipes. Do you, you really know? Uh, I don't really know, and I don't really know what Quinn is thinking, but uh, it gives you an idea of the insight into uh, the people taking care of our animals. So, no, just kidding. Quinn's a great guy. And I love his little notes because they cheer me up. And this is actually a really cool snake. This is actually an Enchi female right here. And the thing is, she's bred to one of our kind of project animals. We call it a new gene animal that is just really, really gorgeous. So this will be the first time that we have potential for super Enchi new genes. This is the clutch I've been waiting for. So I am pretty hyped on it. Let's just go ahead and slowly get this girl off her eggs really quick. We can get this off right here, pull these aside and see how many eggs we actually have. So let's go ahead and get these in the egg box, see what we got going on here. We got two, four, six really beautiful big eggs. Definitely gonna have to separate out these eggs because they will definitely not fit in here with how huge and how piled they are up there. But 57 days from now, we're gonna cut this clutch and I am super excited. Like I said, this new gene animal is really cool. It's kind of got this orange crazy look to it. And the fact that it is actually an Enchi as well, now we bred it to another Enchi, meaning we could get super Enchis. Oh my gosh, it could be amazing if our odds are there. So fingers crossed, 57 days, we're gonna find out. You guys know that I love sometimes to just jump in with my girl Ivy here. She's just chilling in the water right now. And I'm just going to kind of sit up on here and see what she has going on. What up, what up, girl? You want to come up and see me? Come up and see me, baby girl. I sometimes just like to just kind of hang in here and just spend some time with her. And the fact is, is that we're not too far off from her boyfriend coming in here, Harry. I think it'll be within the next four or five days. It's been over a month since we've gotten him. And he'll come in here and get a chance to kind of interact with Ivy. Now, the big question, come on, girl, come on up here. The quick big question is, is that if for some reason Ivy changes her temperament or they don't get along, we'll obviously separate them out. I'm not gonna do anything to jeopardize this relationship that I have. Look at how curious she is. I mean, if I sit here long enough, I promise you she would come up and hang out with me. And I may just do that. I don't know. I may sit in here for the next half hour or so and just kind of chill with her. But it's gonna be pretty cool to see how Aries does in this. And just imagine coming in and seeing them both in the water, maybe their heads together. You know, who knows? I mean, who knows what's gonna happen? And then maybe with any luck, 
here in another 12 months or so, my girl Ivy might be having a bunch of babies. Now, how awesome would that be to have Ivy babies? I don't think I'd want to get rid of any of them. I think I'd keep them all, but of course, if she had 15 or 20 babies, I think Lori would have a problem with me keeping 15 or 20 anacondas. But nevertheless, I'm gonna just chill with my girl Ivy here a little bit and just kind of relax a little bit and just kind of dream of that day when Aries gets to get in here. I know he's gonna love this enclosure. Holy moly, Lori, what in the world is this? What? What is this? I you didn't tell me about this. Oh, there's oh my gosh, it's a little sea turtle. Yeah. Oh, and it comes out of the egg. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, are this all new stuff or just? Uh, well, some of it. I've got oh more downstairs too. How much is that? Can I keep this? <sighs> yeah. Well, we might. So it, it was labeled giant, which I thought it was going to be bigger than this. You thought it was going to be bigger? So That's price pretty big. point, I don't know. It probably won't sell. How so much it is it? probably will be our pet. What is it? Retail is going to be like 60 bucks. That's not bad. Well, yeah, we'll keep it. <laughs> that's awesome. Though. I, that's, literally, that's what I thought. How much I'm like, these? I'm going to try it. Those guys are only like... Like 12 bucks? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I w I'm so going to buy like six of these. These are so cute. That is so awesome. Lori's always adding to the gift shop. I like this though. That is awesome. Let's see what we have here. Some more little Kluber babies. Oh my gosh, this is going to be a hornet's nest. I oh my gosh, this is going to be trouble. I'm not even started and I'm already in trouble. Oh my goodness. I got to set this down. I've got to go find a bucket because I am going to be, oh my gosh, there's snakes everywhere. Ah, oh, ah, oh, snakes everywhere, snakes everywhere. Oh my God, I got a whole clutch just in my hand. Okay, so now I literally have to grab a bucket because there's going to be snakes everywhere. These are some scaleless snakes that are absolutely beautiful. Of course, corn snakes. There's ghost corns in here. There's a whole bunch of other stuff. But let's go ahead and uh, set this one snake down in here. And we'll put these guys in the water just to see. These are just normal scaleless corn snakes here. But take a look at this one right here. This is actually a scaleless silver queen or a ghost corn snake that they call a silver queen. Wow, that thing is a ripper. Oh my God, can you believe that thing? So again, now. Now we have the problem of what am I going to do with these snakes? I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to put them back in this box. I think I'm just going to leave them in this bucket and have Lori just set them up right away because if I try to put them back in here, there's no way that's going to happen. As soon as I open that box up, it was like, bam, just a spring of snakes everywhere. So uh, Lori will have to deal with it from here. Just a few eggs in this clutch right here. Actually, interestingly enough, this was a het creamsicle bred to a creamsicle, which is just kind of more orange corn snakes, right? And uh, we had three babies. All three of them happened to be creamsicle. Now the creamsicle started from breeding an albino corn snake to an emery rat snake. That's what gave it that kind of more orange look. Now years later, they're predominantly corn snake. There might be a little bit of creamsicle emery still left in them. But the fact is, is they still have that nice beautiful orange color and again small clutch only three animals one egg didn't make it right over here but nevertheless pretty good odds to hatch three creamsicles out of a creamsicle to hat clutch now the clutch ball pythons that hatched out this was actually a ghost or what they would call a hypo ball python that was bred to a champagne that was had for ghosts so you can see what we have here is a bunch of mimosa stuff which is the ghost champagne absolutely gorgeous i mean just look at that stuff again the hypo and the champagne mix together really well it's kind of cool that they call them mimosa then these guys right here, these little monkeys here are actually the ghost ball pythons or hypos, just like the mom right here. Uh, absolutely incredible. I mean, I love these guys. Look at the purple that's coming through them. Ooh, doggy. Those things are awesome. Well, that was definitely crazy that those frogs <laughs> ate those snakes. I mean, but again, I want to recycle stuff because I think it's important to not waste it. You know what I mean? Those frogs got a lot of nutrition. It's something that they would eat in the wild, so I think it was really good. As a matter of fact, if you enjoyed this video, here's a playlist of me feeding all kinds of reptiles. Could you also do me a favor right up here? you can subscribe to my vlog channel called Checking In every Wednesday. Noah does one called Choices on Friday. Not kid friendly on that one, please. And over here, you can subscribe to this vlog channel. Turn your post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.